President Assad claims that some countries, particularly members of the US-led coalition, are not ready to accept the success of Palmyra's liberation. He was speaking to Sputnik News Agency in his first international interview since ISIL was defeated in the ancient city. It's been two days since Palmyra was liberated, but a number of countries, some involved in fights against terror and who are members of the US-led coalition, haven't made their assessment. I want to be clear. I'm talking about regimes in France and the UK. They haven't made any comment yet. There are reasons for that. Firstly, the occupation of Palmyra by terrorists a year ago became evidence of the coalition's failure and a lack of seriousness in fighting terrorists, especially ISIL. The liberation of Palmyra took place with Russia's help. It's another factor that shows the lack of seriousness on behalf of Western countries. Well, Assad has criticised countries, including Britain, for failing to join forces against terrorism. And on Wednesday, the UK Foreign Secretary argued against closer collaboration with Moscow, claiming that Russia was a threat. I have no doubt that um, Russia is sincere in its desire to defeat um, Daesh in Iraq uh, and Syria. We can't be working in partnership with a country one day and find that it is doing just exactly whatever it wants in flagrant breach of international norms and rules the next day. The U.S., though, is about to test the resolve of China over its expansion of artificial islands in the South China Sea. The fact that we know this tonight is causing a great deal of anxiety at the Pentagon. And that's not all they're worried about. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin has that story tonight. A senior U.S. defense official confirms the U.S. Navy plans to send the USS Lassen, a Navy destroyer, to within 12 nautical miles of the disputed Spratly Islands in the South China Sea within the next 24 hours to challenge China's claims to the artificial islands. The USS Lassen is armed with Tomahawk missiles and is positioned to carry out the operation. Senior Pentagon officials are angry about the leak and may even consider calling off the operation due to security concerns. The Spratly Islands are the artificial islands that China has been building, adding miles of shoreline and laying down what look like military runways, adding to concerns of U.S. allies who want the U.S. Navy to protect these valuable shipping channels. President Obama met with the Indonesian president at the White House today to discuss the effort to defeat ISIS and concerns about Chinese aggression in the South China Sea. Defense Secretary Ash Carter and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs General Joe Dunford leave for Asia on Friday. Meanwhile, U.S. Pentagon and intelligence officials are warning that an uptick in Russian submarine activity near vital undersea cables could cripple the nation's ability to communicate in the event of a war. If you make cuts in the right places, take you months, years to go out and maybe repair and try and figure out where these cuts were made. So even a mild disruption could be trillions of dollars in economic damage to the United States. A senior Pentagon spokesman confirmed that any attempt to sever these fiber optic cables would leave them blind. Quote, it would be a concern of ours to hear if any government was tampering with underground cables. The commander of U.S. naval forces in Europe said recently Russian submarine patrols have risen by 50 percent since last year and pose a direct threat to NATO. The Pentagon took note last month when a Russian spy ship, the Yantar, cruised along the east coast of the United States en route to Cuba near some of these vital undersea cables. Brett? Jim, what can you tell us about this video released this weekend showing that hostage rescue in Iraq? It was released, Brett, by the Kurdish government, much to the consternation of some in the U.S. military, because it clearly shows U.S. Delta Force operators in a combat role, helping with the rescue. Constant gunfire rings out in the background. Hostages are pulled from cells. The black flag of ISIS is in the background. The prisoners are frisked during the process. CENTCOM then released this video from the no nose cone of the U.S. warplane that destroyed the ISIS prison from the air. It is a more clinical picture of war. These videos attempt to answer the question, was the operation worth it? Army Master Sergeant Joshua Wheeler, an elite commando, was killed during the raid. Brett. Jennifer Griffith, live at the Pentagon. Jennifer, thank you. Well, right now, growing concerns over China's actions in the South China Sea after Beijing deployed fighter jets to a contested island there just days after it reportedly sent radar and surface-to-air missiles, a move seen as a major escalation. China's intent 
to militarize the South China Sea is as certain as a traffic jam in D.C. We say that's pretty certain. Let's bring in Gordon Chang, Asia analyst and author of The Coming Collapse of China. Gordon, we've talked about this quite a few times. This isn't just about territory, a land grab for China. Talk to our viewers a little bit about the, what's at stake, considering the shipping lanes that are around these islands. Yeah. Each year, there's $5.3 trillion of commerce on and over the South China Sea. But it's more than just that dollar value. The United States has stood for freedom of navigation for more than two centuries, and we defend the global commons. We can't have China or any other nation close off international waters and airspace, because if we do that, the open architecture that we put together after the end of the Second World War, which has brought all this peace and prosperity to the world, that will be over. That's what's at stake. Interesting. So it's not just the cost to maybe every single American consumer as somehow these shipping lanes were restricted, but also philosophically what our country stands for is also at stake, as you point out. Why is China making these moves now, Ch uh, Gordon? Yeah, this is really puzzling because in the past, China made small advances, hoping not to sort of uh, provoke a reaction. But now China's growing for everything at the same time because it's not only these fighter jets, but it's also the surface to air missiles you talked about and the radars in Cauteron Reef, which were disclosed just a couple of days ago. So what China is doing is lashing out. And this shows that not only are the hardliners in control in Beijing, but also that they are no longer thinking strategically. And really horrible things happen when countries abandon strategy. What do we do about it, Gordon? Well, there are a number of things. First of all, we got to work with our partners in the region, which includes almost every country, um, to have joint patrols in the South China Sea. We need to contain China. But also we need to end these military-to-military -military exchanges we have with the Chinese Navy especially, because this is the last time that we need to be showing friendship to the Chinese. We have to start imposing some costs, and those costs may have to be economic as well, because the Chinese economy right now is in severe distress, so we can push the Chinese back Back, but only if we use the leverage that we have in our control. So here's what China says. This is the foreign ministry spokeswoman saying this just this week. There is no difference between China's deployment of necessary national defense facilities on its own territory and the defense installations by the United States in Hawaii. What do you think of that reasoning? That reasoning is really wrong. First of all, there is no territorial dispute to Hawaii. But with regard to Woody Island, which is where these fighter jets have been deployed to, they're disputed by Vietnam and uh, Taiwan. Also, with the other islands in the Spratlys, in the southern portion of the South China Sea, there you have about six or seven claimants. You've got not only Taiwan and Vietnam, the Philippines, Brunei, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam. So basically what you've got is a multinational dispute. So this is very different from Hawaii. You know, no one's talking about a dispute over Kansas, and that's really what China is trying to say, that this is just like Kansas. But, but now that we've seen China make these moves and we've watched them build up these islands over the last several years, we've got this great reporting from our Pentagon team about the surface-to-air missiles going in, now fighter jets. Are we past the point of no return, Gordon? Is there the thinking that China all of a sudden is going to say, okay, you're right, we're going to collect all our gear, and we'll bring it back to, to Beijing? Or are we in a, in a totally different scenario now that really gives us one path forward, and that is China maintaining control of these islands? Yeah, I think in many ways we've passed the point of no return because, first of all, Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler, is very much a nationalist. He's very arrogant. He believes in Maoist foreign policy. But even worse, we have the military now becoming much more powerful in the Chinese political system. You know, people say that Xi Jinping controls the military, but he relies upon them for the core of his political support. So they get to tell him what to do. And we've seen evidence of that in the East China Sea, where they declared an air defense identification zone in 2013. They're about to do the same thing in the South China Sea with all of these missiles and, and planes. So clearly the military now, I think, is calling the tune. and, and this this is a very dangerous situation because so, you have disorganization right. at the top of the Chinese political system. Just quickly before I let you go, I mean, what do you think are the scenarios that are out there now that they have the fighter jets, now that they have the surface-to-air missiles, now that they have the reports of their defense systems along the coral reefs? Are they look, you know, are they going to prove a point by trying to take out a, a ship, a cargo ship, or a plane? What is really their next move? How dangerous can this be? 
that really is the next move, and the question is whether they're going to take it. Uh, you know, this is a situation where China is militarizing, despite the pledges it gave to Secretary Kerry just last month, and despite the pledges of Xi Jinping giving to Obama in, in September. So, you know, you cannot rule out any horrible scenario because that's very where well, that's very well where this could be going. It's scary to think about, but we have to consider all possibilities because we are in kind of this new space with this specific part of the world. Uh, Gordon, great to have your expertise as always. Thank you so much. رازموگش موشکی اقتدار ولاگرد از چند روز گذشته در نقاط مختلف پهنگی سرزمینی ایران اسلامی آغاز شده است. مرحله نهایی این رازموگش با امداد دیروز شنبه با شلیک موشک ب... President Assad claims that some countries, particularly members of the US-led coalition, are not ready to accept the success of Palmyra's liberation. He was speaking to Sputnik News Agency. And the UK. They haven't made any comment yet. There are reasons for that. Firstly, the occupation of Palmyra by terrorists a year ago became evidence of the coalition's failure and a lack of seriousness in fighting terrorists, especially ISIL. The liberation of Palmyra took place with Russia's help. It's another factor that shows the lack of his first international interview since ISIL was defeated in the ancient city. It's been two days since Palmyra was liberated, but a number of countries, some involved in fights against terror and who are members of the US-led coalition, haven't made their assessment. I want to be clear, I'm talking about regimes in France. 